Software developers need good, fast tests to be able to develop safely and quickly new features, updates, because the sooner you get alerted to the fact that you broke something, the sooner you can fix it and get on with doing something more valuable. Fast unit tests are the basis of a good testing strategy. And there are some bugs that unit tests just won't find. You will need some form of integration tests. But as Martin Fowler has pointed out, the term integration test can mean a lot of different things. In today's video, we're going to look at an example of a narrow integration test for an outbound port. We're going to strategically use mocks to limit the scope of the test and we'll look at why that makes your test better. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer, creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. This video shows a coding demo, which is an excerpt from more comprehensive video training materials that I use in my work as a technical coach. Take a look at my website for more information about that. In this project, I've got several classes and interfaces, which are supposed to make up a kind of hexagonal architecture. And this class, Enterprise Phonebook, is in my domain layer. And it uses a couple of ports to communicate with other services. So it's got an authorizer and an alerter. So the authorizer is used here in the lookup method to check whether we are authorized to look up this name in the enterprise phone book. And this is an interface. Uh, it's, this is the port. And it's as simple as I could make it. It's literally got no arguments. It's just going to tell you should it authorize or not. So this port has got a corresponding adapter class that implements it. And this is the, the actual functionality in the adapter that's going to go away and use a, an HTTP client to go and make a request to uh, the, the remote server and then interpret the response. Now, I've deliberately put a bug in here uh, so that the, I can write, when I write a test for this, it will be more interesting. Um, so basically, I'm, I'm telling it that at the moment, it's going to say that we're authorized unless we get a 403. But actually, there are a lot of HTTP status codes, hundreds of these things, and a lot of those should also not be authorized, like a 404, for example. Um, so I need to actually change this code to just check that we're only authorized on a 200. But I'm going to leave that bug in there for the moment because I want to show you how to write a test for this adapter class. So I made a start on creating a, a class here for my security clearance authorizer test. And I've been thinking about a couple of test cases. Um, if um, the server returns 200, then is authorized. Um, if the server returns 404, then is not authorized. And that's going to hopefully trigger that bug that I showed you just now. So these are the two cases that I want to write. Now, let's start with a, a test case. And I can use this as the, the name of the test case. Now, here I need to actually have an authorizer. Um, I can just construct one. Now, this takes arguments. It needs the URL of the server it's going to talk to. So uh, for this, I want to use real IO. So this is an actual integration test. But as if you remember from this picture, I don't actually want a real endpoint. I don't want it to talk to the real service. This is a narrow integration test. It's just going to um, use real IO, but then I'm going to mock the port at the other end. So I need um, an actual server to be running that where I can control the kind of responses that it gives. So that's what I've made a little bit of preparation work here. I've got an HTTP server lifecycle, JUnit5 extension, and it's got this um, before each callback so that before each test in this class, it's going to actually start an HTTP server and store that in a static field where I can go and grab one. So I'm going to use that. Uh, so let's let's get that. So I need to use my HTTP server lifecycle to get the HTTP server. And when I've got the HTTP server, um, it's got a URL basically. So I can use that in my um, constructor here. So then I need to make an assertion. Uh, so we'll set true. 
um, the authorizer is authorized. So that's for this case. Um, and this one, I want it to return um, a Boolean. I want it to return true. I want it to return a 200 from my HTTP server. So I need to configure this HTTP server with uh, that it's going to return a 200. So if I go and have a look at this lightweight HTTP server, this is a class I kind of knocked together. Um, the, the, the clever bit of this is the handler that it uses. And for that, this handler is what it actually uses to uh, handle the requests that come in. And this is the part where I've got a test double. And I've hand coded this test double um, just to make it absolutely explicit that this is, this is not a real endpoint. This is not my real code. This is something that I've put together for this test. And it's got this um, useful property that I can tell it what response it should return. And uh, so for this test, what I want to do, if I go back to my test case, so I need to configure this HTTP uh, server's um, handler, set the response. I want it to return a 200 um, with the message OK. And then that should be authorized. So I'm going to be able to run this test now. And it's it takes a little while to, to start up because it needs to start that HTTP server. So it's obviously going to be slower than a normal unit test. And this is Kotlin, so it also has quite a slow startup time. Um, but it's hopefully going to eventually come up with the idea that this is going to pass. There we go. So that, that case actually works. I haven't hit my bug. My adapter so far is working. So I'm, I'm going to um, try and do the same thing for the, the not authorized case. Um, but of course, let me change the, the test name. So if the server returns 404, then it's not authorized. So let's change this to 404 and um, not found 404. So then this is going to assert false. So that's also needs importing. And then hopefully this test is going to expose my bug. There we go. So uh, this test has indeed failed as I hoped. So if I go and fix that bug then, let's change this so that we are instead only returning true on a, a 200. Let's go back and run my tests again. And you can see that this time both tests are passing. So this uh, shows that I've got a unit test. For, well, it's not a unit test. It's a narrow integration test for my security clearance authorizer that finds bugs in the adapter class. And this is what I set out to do. I'm just going to tidy up my tests a little bit. I don't need these comments. Now I turn them into tests. But what I'd like you to be able to do now is to build on what I've done here. Go and get the code. And if, I, if you remember, this enterprise phone book actually had two ports that it was using. It also has an alerter and it uses the alerter in the, the add method to alert if somebody's trying to add something suspect to the phone book, that it should send an alert. So this is another port and it's got another adapter, which also has bugs in and uh, deliberately. What I want you to do now is basically go and try and do what I did and write another narrow integration test for this adapter that checks that uh, you can find these bugs. Next time you're waiting for your slow, broad integration tests, I hope you'll spend a few minutes thinking about how you could instead use this kind of technique to write narrow integration tests. Now today's video was specifically about testing outbound ports in hexagonal architecture. And there are of course also inbound ports where you use mocks a little differently. And as I mentioned, this demo is taken from a more comprehensive training material that I use in my work as a technical coach. I use the Saman method, and you can find more about that on our website, samancoaching.org. So do check it out, and you could sign up for our newsletter. Happy coding.